just, I, <laughs> or I just, I just watched episode 11 of all day, volume 6, you know, the episode, <laughs> I'm giving myself a minute, because I have all the energy in the world, like, just going for me right now, I've only drunk, I've only drunk caffeine all day, I had a D&D session which pulls out the tenth of one of my life, I've been excited for this episode for absolutely ages, and plus my laptop, the charge is just gone at the moment, so I don't know when this is going to run out of battery. In the videoing, I swear tends to take a fair amount, so I'm going to have to do this whole video with like, yeah, I don't know how much battery, it doesn't say a specific percentage, but a fraction of the battery, and just hope it doesn't run out, I won't run out of time, and it doesn't save, so... I have a lot of tension going through me right now and my heart's just like <sighs> Okay, so let's <sighs> emotional support either. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try and start, I'm just gonna try and get through this. So let's start at the beginning. Let's start the first thing that happens and that was with the fight with the net, which are like fair enough, you know. Sometimes you want to think a bit more like how I think you want to think tense, even though that did get tense later on. Sorry I'm from talking too quickly, I'm just excited, I'm like vibrating, you know. Like, watch an episode, my knee, you know when your leg does a thing or it just sort of jitters like the uh, That was my leg. Just, it's just trying to do it now, I'm trying to just put it on and stop and like, calm, speak, don't ramble. I have a feeling that you're not rambling is. I don't know how well my attempts are going for but I really like, I really like that sort of fighting in this episode was great in general. I think like, the fight with the mech, that's the more like hearted one, that's very good for the more, obviously the more tense one we've had in, and um, my throat is dry, but anyway. I really liked how they just sort of, they're being, they're being more creative and dynamic with the fights in this volume, I really like. I did say before about how I felt the fights were improving, um, like, but, like, you know, the criticisms of volume 5, when, like, the fighting in the camera didn't match up and some characters, positions didn't match up, some stood still or acted in ways that you wouldn't in a fight and it was a bit weird, they didn't feel natural. And then this is very dynamic, it's like boom, 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 stuff's happening. And it feels like they're really working together to try and take this big mech down. And it's just, if you compare if you compare that fight to some of the other fights we've seen earlier on, it's really good. They use the environment, which is the best thing to make a fight feel real, I guess, even if your camera is like, like kind of stark or it's like a weird amount of people or something in a fight, if you use the environment it automatically makes it feel more real. Which is one of the reasons why I love the Syndrome Neo fight. Because they really moved around the space, they moved it on the furniture, Neo even threw some things at things. They really, it wasn't just like punch, dodge, it was like constant motion and using, I don't know if that makes sense, the characters in the space felt like they were in the same sort of world, they didn't feel like a back, like character animation pasted into a background sort of feed. But um, yeah, being creative with the semblances, I love the way they used rubies, because rubies has, ruby has a really good semblance, and obviously one of the criticisms of like, the films, like, 4 or 5, she didn't, I don't know if she used her semblance during Volumes 4 and 5. I've only watched her Volumes 4 once, so I'll have to rewatch it one day. If I ever have free time again. But, <laughs> yeah, I really like the way, because it is, people have called it super speed, even Pyrrha said speed, like, in the episode thing, but it's not even quite like that, it's just like a burst of motion in, like, a general direction. And it doesn't have to be straight, it can go up or down a bit, but gravity still has something like semblance of effect, but just less so because she doesn't weigh as much, but she still has that momentum forwards as if she 
be a, a heavy thing rushing forward, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense. But like the super speed, you would still fall down. If that makes sense, that she can like propel herself, which makes this. The, it really does, like, this is the perfect sort of fight to showcase how cool her semblance actually is. Because, like, Blake said sort of moved, like, so she can move upwards and she can slide to the side and things like that. But, Blake, like, Ruby isn't, like, a slide out of the way of the hit person. She's not, a, like, an, she doesn't, like, evade, sort of, in the same way sort of Blake does. She just goes shh, forward, which makes sense. Uh, you have to be fairly close to use a scythe as, like, you know, compared to the actual rifle part of that, and, um, I just, I really love the show in which she just, like, r like, rushes up in front of the mech and then she comes, like, right in front of the camera. Two, two gear almost, and I love, that's, like, chef's kiss. Beautiful. <laughs> I love that. And like Weiss obviously freezing the water. It's just and you have them you have them like really strategizing and you also have them in character as they do. Like even even like got bits of Ruby's personality as she was fighting and everything and it's like fantastic. I love I love everything about how they've written Ruby in this volume. It's like this is this Ruby is the exact thing that I felt like was sort of missing maybe in like previous volumes where she hadn't got as much like attention I guess. This is the exact thing I wanted and I'm getting it and I'm happy for it because I love Ruby the character and I love seeing this potential be sort of worked on because it can be difficult to sort of um, it can be difficult to get sort of positive, optimistic, naive characters sometimes to feel real or likeable. Which is like it's weird because like one of the things you need for a character to be likable is for them to have like they need to have some positive sort of trait like be friendly or have a like a good moral of what you feel is a good moral code or um be sort of like, I don't know, like playful or jokey or something like that. But at the same time, if you have a collection of these things with like, like not much, it can be easy to just be like, they are all these good traits and they are not very realistic, I suppose, because obviously everyone has their own like issues and like people positive traits and negative traits, which can have all kinds of consequences and stuff and it can be difficult to try and like get these characters we hope like, all these positive traits and feel like a real original character because some are quite copy and paste which you can see in a lot of animated things like in general mainly aimed at children obviously <laughs> but um yeah it just it just all of her like her jokes and her comments and everything are like oh it's like a video game or something you know like it's all it's always at the back and stuff like that and they check the back and it's in there and it's a big bit of tech so we'd have to fit in the back and it just makes sense to me and it's also like quite endearing and funny because i was like ruby is this massive nerd throughout all of this <laughs> she's a big nerd and like i love that about her um i almost forgot about the ren and laura thing <laughs> I don't know how I forgot about that. <laughs> Laura actually called Ren my man. Like her man. And I just... I even remember when I was watching like um, the episode... 11 or 5? It might have been. The one, you know, that scene where Ren gets like hit by Hazel and is like shot till he falls to the ground. That's why I like in this episode reaction I was like, Ren be careful, Ren don't get hurt. Ren don't get hurt because he always seems to get hurt in a fight. Um, a bit of a glass cannon. But, um, like in that scene, when I was watching like, the volume, that volume 5 episode, I was literally like, 
Oh no, I'll go get your. I never remember saying let yelling something along the lines of no, I'll go get your man or go protect your man or something like that. I just thought I heard her actually say it, but it's just like this fantastic moment for me because again with like sort of Ruby, like there's a like there's a character with like potential there for the like the relationship between Ren and Nora, which like volume four was like touched on. But volume five they didn't really as much. And you're just sort of like what happened? But like for her to call in that, like that's sort of like a that's like a confirmation without a confirmation of Ren and Nora. And like I would like a better confirmation. You know, like them to be like, Oh yeah, we're we're dating and stuff. But like that makes that makes my ship a hard happy. I have lots of ships with Ruby and I'm like I know that most of them aren't gonna be canon, but like the ones I'm mainly rooting for are like to become canon. Not necessarily because I like them the most, but because I feel like they're the most probable and what would work best story wise with what they're doing right this second is like Renora uh, and bees, but like if they ever bring Ilya back, there's a, a few relationships that I think she would be, you know, good for her character because she's very interesting and, you know, things like that where I'm like, if this becomes relevant, I would want this. Like if they did a Steam Talk Flash, Teen Stark flashback episode, I would want Polly Parents to be canon, even though I don't think that could happen because you barely ever see polyamorous ships in shows. So I don't expect it, even though I think romantic relationship between Ty, Summer, and Raven, all three of them dating each other, that's that's what makes sense, the sense most to me. That's like from a writing thing as well, and, and as a viewer who ships. But um, I don't think that that's probably the least likely one. But yeah, so it's basically me just yelling like, Renora and bees. So this episode was good for that. But I mean, also like White Rose, so this episode was pretty, pretty good for that as well. <sighs> I'm glad that Weiss managed to summon that. It's not a bee, it's a wasp. The Lancer, the Queen Lancer, she managed to summon that. And one in five had her summons be very slow, so she's got she's got better at it, which is good because that means she's less likely to be impaled, and I like that. <laughs> you know, I, I that's quite a, that's quite a good ability in battle to avoid getting impaled. So I greatly appreciate that. So I'm hoping that carries on to another fight that sort of shows her progression where she literally just manages to summon in a fight and it just wrecks things. Not necessarily she insta kills her with the enemies and she wins and everything's hurrah but like for her to quickly summon and not get like you know battered <laughs> and have her aura broken but um yeah I'm sort of concerned about uh, the status of the Atlas military and everything like that. I've always been like, oh, I don't trust Ironwood. And people are like, oh, but I like Ironwood, he's cool. And I'm like, yeah, Ironwood is cool, but I don't trust him. <laughs> you know, there's lots of characters that I like or and or think are cool that I don't trust. Like Raven. I think Raven's cool. She has done a fair few things that I don't agree with, though. <laughs> and I just feel like the entirety... I'm not saying like every single thing about Atlas, bad thing about Atlas is on this fault, but I'm just saying like Atlas as like Atlas authority in general, whether it be like the schools or the military, like both like in like individual people and as a whole, they're in sync up. <laughs> like that 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 old lady, I can't remember her name, she she's not a stable leader, she's just well, she's she's xenophobic. She said people from other countries aren't as educated, which is like milk yikes. But obviously, she's not meant to be an entirely sympathetic character, so I think that's intentional. I do. Uh, 
I do appreciate that, like, Maria and hers rivalry sort of affected the fight in that, but, uh, yeah. Overall, I like that fight, I like how everyone was involved. Uh, the scenery was also very beautiful. <laughs> Not that anyone was really looking at the scenery, but the whole fight was very good and very interesting. It's it's still like because we've had like ru like Ruby characters fight someone in a mech suit before, so it could have easily been like the same thing. But it still like feels like a really different fight to me, which is good because like it's it's like pretty much the exact same fight for us all, but they just managed to structure it in a completely different way, and also. Just yeah, it's. I was gonna say something about that fight, but then I'm just sort of like realizing the more I'm talking about the fight, about not only my battery life, but I need to get onto this other fight. Everyone's been waiting for this one for like years. People are like. Oh, is it? Get, it's like, don't know if it's going to happen in volume 4. Maybe it will happen in volume 5. Okay, it's going to happen in volume 6. And then it's like, it's set up episode 10. Episode 11, it's like, starts slash like the first half of this movie. And then it's episode 12. I don't know how many episodes there are going to be in this volume. I always get, I get my numbers mixed up a lot. I have like, memory issues with this. So I'm like, is it 13? Or is that another series? Is it 20 episodes? Or is it another series? Is it 14? Or is that another series? Because I watch a fair amount I watch a fair amount of TV that I like. I should probably be doing other things. But when I do have any free time, it's usually watching something on TV. Or laptop in this case. But Yeah, I don't know how many episodes there are, but this does make me sort of concerned about all these loose ends. But they they might be doing it on purpose, like maybe the last episode has a big cliffhanger about something. But they need to resolve this quickly so they can get to whatever Cinder and Neo are doing, and whatever like Emerald and Mercury are going to decide to do, and answer this question about what Osbin's going to do. I would also like a question answered about what Raven's done, because she just sort of left. Obviously, it's like a huge emotional toll for her, and she's like lost the location of the tribe. I mean, she has someone bonded to another person in the tribe. But, um, yeah. Those are like. This is like a huge thing happening now, and I'm like concerned. I don't want this to be like the last huge thing that happens, even though this is like the huge, hugest thing, and I just feel. Like that fight was amazing, like, is amazing, because it's still in progress, I'm just going to have to wait a week to watch it end. I don't know how many fight episodes they can get out of this fight, but if they are paced as quickly as this one, they could probably get a couple more, but I just hope that it's, the fight itself is resolved in the next episode, and then maybe the episode after that it's breaking and sorting things out but I don't know whatever they're doing right now it's great fantastic I love the way they're using semblances or oh, like oh because Yang didn't use her semblance her eyes never went red her hair never glowed which is interesting I'm sort of, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about what's going to happen. Because I know that they have, like, someone has to defeat Adam. And that Blake and Yang can't die yet. But I'm still concerned because there are lots of things that can happen in between those two things. Everything that Blake did in that fight, that was like the sort of 
evading as I said and moving away and trying to just avoid getting here and stuff like that and him like talking down to her and just attacking 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 but it's beautifully with their characters and what they were doing that and the angles and the movements and everything like that and the, the whole gang like essentially sacrificing a motorbike and just throwing a bumblebee at Adam I didn't see that coming. I never thought, oh yeah, Yang's gonna, you know what's gonna happen in a fight, Yang's gonna do this and this. I was like, no, in a, in a fight with Adam, we're gonna, we're gonna see his face for the first time. And, uh, I was hoping, like, I've always said, I've been saying for months how I wanted, like, Adam to, like, try and hit Yang with a sword and for her to catch it in her robot hands or something. And then just, like, the moon slice, she just absorbing it with her robot art, like, that's not exactly what I said, but like, that's like, I don't want to be like, oh yeah, I predict this. I'm just like, I'm excited. I'm, I'm sort of glad that I'm sort of on the complete wavelength of this sort of show where it's sort of giving me what I want, and it's like I can't necessarily predict it. That's like the ideal sort of thing I want in a show where it's like presents this thing that is going to give the audience, and they get it but you can't predict everything that's going to happen and get bored like that's the exact sort of thing I want in a show really I think that's like the perfect material of an ongoing show that you want to keep watching and I'm so glad that the Adam thing wasn't I'm so glad that it wasn't like silver eyes or something because people were predicting that for ages and I was like no I just want him to be some dude and he is some dude and you're branded, I think it was. It's like a burn on his eye. I keep forgetting cameras are reversed on his eye. And the eye's still functional, but it's like a bit messed up, which, like, fair. And it's got a weird symbol. I can't remember what it looks like exactly, but. I just. I'm wondering. He said, like. He, he, about all the things about how people would hurt him and that. I'm like, how does it how that happen is what's happened to him too, like people been theorising about um, how he might have been like abused by humans or attacked by humans at some point and that's like how a reason why his hatred sort of grew or maybe like is a white thing sort of punishment or something, like a, an extremely severe one. And that's why we've like not really ever seen it because it's like probably you know I'm so glad I just I was so relieved to just when he like took that off and it was a blue eye and not silver <laughs> I remember some people being like oh I hope he has like green eyes because people with orange hair and green eyes die in this show and it's like, I mean mood, but <laughs> I'll take blue eyes, that's fine. I'm just, I don't even know what to say, I'm just like so grateful for this sort of moment. It can be anything like, neither of them, neither Blake nor Yang are clearly okay, but I think that's the point. I think that's what's sort of great about this. You see Blake's star, and like her sort of just like she was like fighting him more before, and then she sort of like loses the star, I guess, and it's more like just trying not to get hit, and then her sort of getting battered around and saying like, "Oh, you're alone now, you know, if you know if you're about to be alone, like I am." Sort of continuing like this sort of you deserve you deserve the bad things I'm doing sort of thing. And her like sort of like being down like downhearted and then she remembers and her ears prick up and that's beautiful detail and she hears the end coming and it's like because her cat hearing would be better than the bull horns, you know, she can hear. And it's just like the I'm not alone, everything about that it was just beautiful. I just I like the fact that both Blake and Yang I don't want to say they were damaged because like they're not like 
antique furniture or something where like their worth is swung up diminished diminished because they have a scratch on they're injured wounded maybe psychologically speaking and it's not like oh i'm gonna protect i'm looking after you i'm gonna face this you're you're the weak one sort of thing it's we're we're gonna do this together because that's really Yang's yeah, always been like calling Blake her partner and everything like that and I think that's what we really want it's about like meeting together it's not it's not diminishing your sort of strength as a person it's just you know love and teamwork makes the world go around it's this that's the best that's the best thing I don't know how to put that into words I think how they did it was fantastic and they held hands Sorry, I just really ship them. Everything about this is just now they just need to kick his ass. No, they just need to just go for it. Yang really was going for it before, and I was really proud of her. And it's it's really interesting to see someone fight with a sword. You, generally, when it's like someone fights with a sword, someone else fights with a sword. It's a sword fight. You don't generally go punch. But I think obviously that's a great thing about Yang and her weaponry that she will just get up in the action trying to before like when it was like the first couple of volumes it's like for a thrill and now it's like to protect the people she loves and uh, that fight could have been a weird thing to choreograph but I think it sort of hinted at how Yang would fight without using her semblance at all in uh, volume 5 and some of Volume 5 fights were good, eh? but I really like the one with Yang and the bandits where she just like beat the crap out of them without using a semblance, it's all very casual and she just used her gauntlets to like misdirect and stuff like that and like knock people out of the way as well as like knocking people down and just she refuses to use her semblance and I'm wondering if that's a good thing or a bad thing because lots, lots of people do say that's how she got hurt, that's the reason she got hurt, she just recklessly jumped in and I think, to be honest, I think it's something that can really be avoided. I am sort of team Yang, I'm not only team Yang is smart, I'm like, sort of like, hot take, Yang is the smartest member of team Ruby, but obviously that's a very controversial take, you know, not, but I haven't heard anyone be like, yeah I agree with that. But in terms of like practicality and being suspicious of bad people, Yang has sort of shown that. Like she was like, oh, I don't fully trust Ospin. Oh, of course I don't trust Raven fully. But like obviously there are some things that she learned from her as well. So it's not like her seeing things in black and white. It's I don't, I don't think I can trust you with the safety of myself and the people I care about and obviously that upsets me and just sort of everything she does like working out about how to get to Ruby Quicker with Raven even with like the apathy grim when she was overtaken by that it's like oh if we drop it by the the well Salem could be won't ever find it like she didn't know they were grim down there that Salem might have had a connection to we don't know how Salem's relationship to the grim works and if she can see through them or anything but like if there weren't any grim and they just dropped it down there it probably would take years for it to be found and it probably wouldn't be their problem unless someone was following them which obviously she didn't know about we still don't know where Adam really came from or anything, so... Yeah, like, they were, she wasn't to know that, so that's like a pretty smart decision with the information she had when her brain was literally being taken over by Grimm. Like, that's, yeah, like, just... She's, she is smarter than people would believe, which sort of makes her quote makes sense because I've always not I've always not felt that Yang was being misjudged by the important characters of the show Ruby that it was mainly some of the fans but like I'm not saying that to attack the fandom 
it's just you know there's always that small minority of fans on the internet which are very loud and mean about certain people and it's like no thank you you know like you can be blonde and have like tits and just you can be very intelligent those things don't contradict each other at all in any way shape or form but you know what people can be like but i got a bit off track there but the whole thing with adam where she got her arm cut off with what information she had it made perfect sense for her to rush forward and attack like full at full power using her semblance like if someone's gonna attack like if someone's like got like stabbed okay you're in a confrontation what are your options run away that would leave blake to be hurt someone she loves and she even says she loves however you feel about whatever their relationship is platonic or whatever she does love blake and she doesn't want blake to get hurt so if yang ran away whether to get help or to protect herself adam could and would hurt blake or like get an opportunistic attack could like try and shoot yang in the back or something like that so that doesn't work she could try and negotiate okay that guy just stabbed blake in the gut like you can't why would you negotiate with that i wouldn't negotiate who would negotiate so like someone just stabs one of the people you love in the gut and you're not gonna be like oh we like okay friend maybe settle down there what are your list of demands like no you'd want to stop them and like that sort of leaves like the only other option like fight and of course she's going to fight full frotto full, full frotto frottle can't speak sorry because if this guy can take down blake who she knows is a capable fighter she's going to have to like she can't just like this isn't just like one beowulf this is going to be like a big powerful enemy so she did attack with like the full attack that she had at the time like all of that makes sense and that is just in a span of a few seconds based on an extremely like and, and people are like oh it's just an emotional reaction and it's like yeah but I, one of the reasons why i like yang's character is because intelligent characters are often separated from emotion and i don't like that because lots of people people tend to make decisions based on emotions over like logic all the time so even like really smart people make um, decisions based on emotions or place emotions over like cold hard logic so i like the fact that yang is like pretty smart when you look when you look into her character and makes decisions based on like her emotions based on like wanting to protect the people that she loves like you know like the whole sort of thing in volume five like she knows that she's probably gonna die doing this but she's good she wants to protect Ruben, so she's gonna do it you know like loads of smart characters would be like oh there's a high, high, high chance i'll die okay i'll leave and then where's the show you know so i like that sort of melding together and I think that at the moment when Adam cuts off her arm, like, that just sort of shows that. I don't think that her using her semblance or sort of rushing in was a bad decision. I think it was sort of the only option. Because running away or running away doesn't work for protecting Blake. And negotiating would not obviously not work for protecting protecting Blake. She couldn't hide, he already saw her and she was yelling and she's bright yellow, her hair, so just fight, that's the only option. So it sort of made like this that's sort of I've got a bit off topic there, but the whole thing with should she use the semblance for this fight? That's the question. Because I don't think that's what sort of made her lose the fight, the fight with Adam before, that confrontation before. I just think it was like... I don't think 
Blake by herself at that time could have beaten Adam. And I don't think Yang by herself at the time could have beaten Adam. Which was essentially what was happening, because they weren't working together. Because everything was mismatched and chaotic, and everyone was scared and terrified, and that was like the fourth, you know? But now they are together, and they're thinking about things strategically, and even though they are sort of like wounded psychologically and probably Blake's probably got a few bru bruises physically by now I mean like she was kind of tossed around a bit and her weapon's probably a bit broken by the looks of that like now they're together like they're fighting them together and they can think about it and we know they work well as a team strategically and they can just click instinctually and just work together even if they're not on like the best of terms they can still manage that and I think that's what it is so whether or not Yang uses a semblance I think it's not the question of should she use a semblance it's just like how good how good is her connection with Blake right now how in tune are they right in this moment because if she has like a PTSD flashback, or if she hesitates, that can you know, that can buy time for a serious injury. And if Blake has something like that, you know, they have to sort of cover each other's weaknesses, which I think they can do because they both have sort of quite differing fighting styles anyway. And that's part of like the whole complementary yin and yang sort of thing. So I think she can use a semblance in the fight and win. I don't think that would necessarily get in the way. But it would be a big character moment. And how, like, whether she chooses to use a semblance or not to use a semblance, I think it's like one of the biggest indicators of where she is right now, mentally. And either way, I would support a decision. I'm team Yang is always right. Because in my point of view, I'm not just... I'm saying that as, like, as a Yang stan. But also, like, pretty much every decision that she's made in the show, I'm like, yeah, I get that. You know? Like, yeah, fair enough. So, I haven't really had any arguments or, like, why did you do that sort of thing about any, like, important decisions she's made with what information she had at the time in the show, so... Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna have to wait and see what she picks. She even the fact that Black and Yang even gave Adam a moment to sort of surrender though. If they murdered him I would instantly I would be like, yeah, oh yeah, I'll probably celebrate to be honest. Like they're a lot more forgiving I suppose in that aspect. Not like they seemed ready to forgive him, but they seemed ready to like, you know, stop this. We don't need to beat the crap out of you and potentially kill you. They didn't have to give him that chance. And obviously he's not going to take that chance because he's Adam and he's horrible and evil and likes to ruin everything. But that sort of does give to the whole... There's sort of strength and forgiveness sort of thing. Well, I'm saying like either of them should forgive Adam because obviously I do not want that in any way, shape or form. But in the sort of strength being in the mindset where like if someone does have good in them and like wants to change and is beginning that change in themselves, like Idea was, that they should do that, forgive them. But obviously there has to be a moment where it's like you can make a decision right now to do something good. Are you going to do that? And like even if you know the, per the person's not going to accept that, that, you know, I think there is a certain strength about you as a person if you give it anyway to like everyone that one moment of you can do better now. You, you could like it doesn't have to... I don't want to say it doesn't have to be like this because that's giving me flashbacks to what John says about Pira and I do not want that right now, especially after that other episode. But yeah, I think it is testament to their strength as characters. I'm saying strength a lot, but that really is what 
like in Yang, make me think of. You know, it is nice to see sort of two mentally ill women just sort of trying to heal and like protect each other together and growing as part of like this story. It does sort of, it makes me happy. This fight didn't like exactly make me happy. It made me very concerned and tense and excited, but mainly like not like cheerful, I would say. But uh, but that is pretty much. I'm gonna stop now before I keep rambling and saying the same things over and over. My point is that I'm very excited for next week's episode, and I want it now. But obviously can't have it now so that sucks. I'm going to try and upload these as soon as I can. But it's going to be okay. They're going to be out. This is going to be good. Yes. Nothing's ever going to go wrong. It's not like there are more episodes left. <laughs> At least one thing has to go right. That's the rule, isn't it? But yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video, I guess. It's mainly just me going, ah! I'm just rambling and saying the same things over and over about how I love Yang and Blake and the how Ruby's improving. That's pretty much... That seems to be the theme for these videos, and I'm sorry if any of them sound samey. I just get super excited about, like, potential growth. And I just really love my characters and Yang is my, if you have to make me choose, Yang is my favourite, if you have to make me choose. So obviously I'm going to focus on this a lot. And also I love bees, so I'm going to focus on this a lot. And I'm just like, <sighs> yeah, anyway. I love them so much. I hope, I hope you like this, this video. I hope you like that episode, even though it wasn't something you can necessarily just, you know, it's not a cheerful watching. It's not the Great British Bake Off. <laughs> you know, it's mainly just like tension. But I thought it was of high quality at least, so I hope you thought it was high quality. Do you have any thoughts? Feel free to comment or whatever. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh, you can't see that. Yeah.